David with Ligoria Drag Racing and in this video I'm going to go over clutch data, what sensors you need and how to pull it up on a log, how to read it on a data log. So the first thing you need is you need flywheel RPM and this is clutch basket. So flywheel main drive sprocket is how many teeth are on your clutch basket and engine main drive sprocket is how many teeth are on your crankshaft. So when your crankshaft and your clutch meet, those teeth need to be counted so that we can find out the primary ratio. Um, the fuel tech can figure out the primary ratio on the back end. So <clears throat> the next thing we need is a drive shaft RPM sensor. This is on the output shaft of the transmission uh, on the front sprocket basically. So on this bike I have 32 teeth. Uh, commonly is 8, 16 tooth, uh, 4 tooth, something like that. Uh, the more teeth, the better. So you need this and you need your gear ratios. So come to gear change detection, put in how many gears you have, and you need your gear ratios for each gear. And if you have only 6 gears, then don't worry about 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, this is 2.69 to 1, 1.94 to 1, and so forth. So th that's all the information that you need. And then we can go to the data logger. And when we pull up the data logger, I have RPM up here now. I have drive shaft RPM. And I can pull up flywheel RPM. So flywheel RPM is the ratio between your engine RPM and your clutch basket. So your engine RPM is uh, 9,968 RPMs whereas the flywheel, your clutch basket is 6,244 at this point. Now we need to bring up input shaft math and we need to pull up uh, clutch slip. And the way that we do that is go to Options, Math Channels, Input Shaft by Drive Shaft. And we can see that that popped up here, Input Shaft Math. And we need to select Converter Clutch Slip. And we can see that that popped up. Click OK. And those will now appear on the left hand side. And we can check mark those. To pull them up on the screen. So you have to do that every single time and I know it's kind of frustrating that you have to do it in every single log. Um, I believe 5.0 uh, is the version where you have to do it each time. So if you have a older version of say 4.91 or older it will populate automatically within the data log. Something changed with the updates and now you have to go to options every time and you have to select that every time. So it's a little bit of a pain but it's not hard to do either. So in this log we have input shaft math, clutch slip, flywheel RPM, and throttle position drive shaft. So I'm going to take off drive shaft and I'm going to take off two step here. And we can see that we have clutch slip here. We have a lot of clutch slip. We have 44% here. And this is the clutch slipping all the way up through first gear. And it locks up right here. So right here, we're 1% and so forth. Down to 0 0.2. That's pretty much locked up. I mean, that's... Uh, uh, the point isn't going to do you much. <laughs> so if you have... 1% of slip or, or anything under like probably 5, 3%. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's not hurting your clutch. But you can see where the clutch and the input shaft come together for total lockup. And you have to have the gear uh, ratios in because what this does is it takes everything from your crank, which is engine RPM, and it calculates all of the math for you. It ca calculates through the transmission, through the clutch, 
and out the output shaft based on how many teeth you have on the output shaft. This run, I already have this pulled up. Uh, we have flywheel RPM, we have input shaft math, and we have clutch slip. You can see in this log that there is more wheel speed here through first gear. And you will always get these little hikes in your input shaft math because it's calculating off of the drive shaft. There is no sensor directly on the input shaft. So you have to rely on it being calculated off of the drive shaft through the whole entire transmission. So this is somewhat false here, but it's not false because if you have more engine RPM, and this is on a slider bike, if you have more engine RPM, you have less slip. So if you have less drive shaft and less engine RPM, you're going to have more slip here because the engine RPM is lower. So the engine RPM is a little higher here. Well, engine RPM isn't higher, but your drive shaft is higher. So it's going to calculate a little differently here. But we can still see where it comes together and is uh, virtually 0% throughout the whole entire run. Now this clutch data, I'll pull up flywheel RPM. I got drive shaft up. Let's take away TPS two-step. Let's go in here. Let's open up our math channels, input shaft by drive shaft, and converter clutch slip. Click OK. We'll let that load, and then we'll pop these babies up there input shaft math and clutch slip so you can see that there is no spin on this bike uh, through first gear and it's a even kind of uh, clutch slip all the way through until it locks up and the engine rpm uh, goes sky high up to the gear change so we have a flat rpm here but we are still gaining in our drive shaft and being that we're still gaining in our drive shaft, we're gaining in our input shift input shaft math until we lock up. And once we lock up, that's when our engine RPM goes up to the gear change. Now, on this bike, if we come here, let's take off drive shaft RPM. And I can see that these are kind of jumbled up here. So what I'm gonna do is go to options and I'm gonna go to clutch slip and I'm gonna do a let's do a negative of uh, let's do negative 25 as our minimum click OK and this should make it easier to read that so it popped it down because we don't have any negative um, or, or very little we have negative but it's on a gear change so we're not worried about the negative on the gear change we're worried about the negative when the actual uh, engine RPM and our input shaft math are not together but not at a gear change because we have these little spikes here uh, and so forth we're not worried about that so when you take the minimum down to negative 25 and you can do that when you come to math channels and you open these up you can click on clutch slip and put a negative 25 here if you want to and click OK and it could do that every time um, so we see that our input shaft math here after the gear change does not meet our flywheel RPM this means we have clutch slip so right now we have 9.3 percent of clutch slip probably not enough to burn your plates or do anything crazy to your clutch but you are eating your clutch a little bit um, and we can see that we're doing that in each gear change throughout here this is only an eighth mile so uh, what this um, what this bike needs is probably a spring change or more weight on the arms mostly most likely more weight on the arms to get it to lock up uh, down track <coughs> you should never 
you should really never have any clutch slip other than in first gear. And this is how we calculate it. You can see that the input shaft math does not start until our drive shaft starts. So the drive shaft RPM, our input shaft math, and our clutch slip does not start until our drive shaft RPM. This bike has, I believe, eight teeth on the drive shaft. Uh, where's that at? Drive shaft. No, it has four. So it has four uh, compared to 32. So we can see how much better a 32 tooth ring is. The more teeth, the better information you're going to get. Um, so I hope this explains the clutch data, what sensors you need, what information you need, and how to input that into your fuel tech. If you don't know what your primary ratio is or your uh, teeth on your clutch basket, your transmission ratios, I typically go to APE, uh, raceparts.com, go to their tech spot and pick out your bike and it usually has all the data there. If you don't, then you might need to pull your uh, motorcycle, your, your engine apart, count the teeth on the crank, the clutch basket, count the teeth on your input shaft, your output shaft and do the math for your ratio or just try to find that information somewhere so hope this helps guys i appreciate you guys watching like subscribe uh, these videos are doing a lot better so i appreciate it thank you